Good morning. Today we look at John chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. And this is a very uh, well-known story. Uh, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night to uh, ask him a couple questions to get to know him. It says, it starts out, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs you do apart from the presence of God. So to start with, the, the Pharisees uh, were considered the most devoted of the Jews. They were the, the, the leaders of the Jews. Um, the Pharisees uh, were a part of the Sanhedrin. Nicodemus was one of the Sanhedrin. It tells us that in here, that... that uh, and the Sanhedrin was a group of 70 of the priests, the scribes, and the elders of the church. They were the ruling council. Um, and that goes way back to the days of Moses when Moses, you know, at his father-in-law's suggestion, chose 70 people to um, help, you know, make decisions and stuff. You know, it just, I mean, so this has been a part of Jewish history for a long time that there is this, ruling council that that helps interpret the laws helps reinforce the laws and and are the instructors that way in so many ways um and then they had one one person that was elected that was the high priest and you know if you think ahead I mean, or just back a few a few days with um as we were reading the the high priest at the time of jesus crucifixion was caiaphas you know and so i mean you know, because we're told that he was brought to the high priest Caiaphas, you know, and so there were, you know, different high priests you know, that were the leaders of this Pharisee, uh, Pharisaical group of the Sanhedrin, the ruling council of the Jews. And so he comes, Nicodemus comes as, as one of the leaders wondering and wanting to find out more about Jesus. And, and I think this is commendable. You know, he wants to learn more about Jesus. He's heard a lot about him. I mean, this is still really early in Jesus' ministry. But, you know, Jesus has been in, the, in Jerusalem for the Passover. According to John's Gospel, he's cleansed the temple, and he's been doing many signs, you know, because it, we only have the one sign that John has told us about, the changing of the wine, the water into wine at the wedding of Cana. But... In chapter 2, it, it is, tells us that Jesus was doing many other signs, or they believed, because of the signs that he was doing in verse 23 of chapter 2. Um, so he was doing a lot of new and different things. And Nicodemus, one of the leaders, comes by night. And, and, and I think that's another important aspect to think about. Two reasons that he could have come by night. First was that you come at night, Jesus isn't going to be surrounded by crowds and you can have a, a more intimate conversation. You can learn a lot more. Or second, maybe he came at night to cover it up so that others wouldn't see that he was there. I, I would prefer to think about, about it as being the former, that he came you know, to have more of a private conversation with Jesus, to learn more about him. And that's, you know, he says, you know, we have come, we, we know you're a teacher from God. And, you know, it, it's, you know, he, he's indirectly saying, I want to know more about you. Because I know, you know, you have to be from God because you couldn't do these things if you weren't, you know. And so he's, he's on a quest for more information. And I, and I think that's so great. I mean, for... For us as well, we, we continue to read the Bible and study the Bible to, to learn more about God and how God interacts with us and God's will for us. I mean, those are, those are reasons I look at the Bible anyway and, and read what's here. And so Nicodemus compliments Jesus to begin. And Jesus says, you know, truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born, some say again, some say from above, some say anew, you know, but... Um, you know, to be, and, and in today's society, we hear a lot about born again Christians, you know, and, 
I mean, I'm a born again Christian. Uh, I was born again in the waters of my baptism when I was, you know, roughly, let's see, August 19th to November 8th or 7th. You know, that wasn't too long. I was, you know, a couple months old, you know, three months old maybe. So, so um, but Jesus is saying, you know, you, you, you need to be born uh, from above. You need to be born again. You need to be born of the Spirit. And he says, you know, flesh begets flesh, spirit begets, begets spirit. And in verse 5, Jesus says, you know, Nicodemus asks, well, how can you be born again when you're, when you're old, you know? Well, Jesus says, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless he's been born of the water and of the Spirit. And in verse 7, he says, don't be astonished that I say, you must be born from above. That, mean, that word you is plural, all of us. And not include, it doesn't just speaking to Nicodemus, but he's speaking to all of us. We must be born above. In verse 8, it says, the wind. In my Bible, it says the wind, but a lot will say the Spirit, because wind and Spirit in, the, in, in, this, um, in this Hebrew text, or Greek, Greek text, rather, um, is pretty much the same word, you know, pneuma. And so, you know, if you're born, the wind moves where it will, the Spirit moves where it will. You know, God works in different ways and in mysterious ways. You know, so the wind blows where it chooses, the spirit, you know, but here, you know, he com compares it more to the wind because Jesus says, you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And as I walked out to my shop this morning, the wind is blowing and I've got a windsock hanging up so I can tell which direction the wind is coming from, much less I can feel it on my face or on my back or whatever. But, you know, we understand a little bit about the wind, but... What causes the wind to move from west to east or north to south? I mean, it's the differences in the pressure systems. We understand and know a lot more about the weather and stuff that way too, but the Spirit of God moves in ways that we don't know and understand. And, and, uh, and that's kind of what Jesus is saying. You know, We don't know where it comes from, where it goes, and that's what it is to be born of the Spirit. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit, is the end of verse 8. And, uh, and and Nicodemus is puzzled by this, you know, this this conversation where he was hoping to hear more, or learn more about Jesus. He gets more confused, and then he says, "How can these things be? I just I don't understand." And what a learning tool those words are. I don't understand, you know. Rather than I I don't want to know, but I don't understand. I don't know. I mean, that's a. a a question or a statement, you know, asking for a little bit more. And, and Jesus says, well, you're one of the teachers of Israel and you don't understand what I'm talking about. And he talks about how we as humans talk about what we know. And, and we may philosophize and we may dream, we may wish, we may wonder, but we can only talk with authority on what we know. And and so Jesus is saying that, you know, if I tell you about earthly things and you don't believe, how are you going to believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Because you know about earthly things, but you don't know about heavenly things. You don't know about how the way is that God works. You don't, you, our human minds can't comprehend that. And, you know, Jesus says, no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended, the Son of Man. He's talking about himself. You know, that, you know, the people, nobody on this earth really knows what it's really truly like to be in heaven. And then Jesus compares himself being lifted up on the cross when that happens to Moses. <clears throat> he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it was, that was to, uh, if people had been bitten by this poisonous snake, snake, <clears throat> if they looked up upon this serpent on the pole that God instructed Moses to make, this emblem of physicians, doctors today, um, they would be healed. And Jesus is saying that, you know, just like Moses lifted up the serpent on a pole, I will be lifted up on a pole on the cross. You know, we, we must look up to Jesus. And then he says, so that whoever believes in him, the Son of Man, might have eternal life. And then we come to the probably the best known verse there is, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. You know, so it's looking up to Jesus, knowing this, this is where we come. 
And the last two verses we look at today are as important or maybe even more important than the one that we all know so well because verse 17, Jesus says, Indeed, the Son, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world will be saved through him. So, you know, Jesus is talking about the world. God loved the world. He sent the Son into the world, not to condemn, but to save. And then verse 18, again, another verse that just gets missed out so much. It says, those who believe in him, Jesus, are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And, you know, lately I've seen a couple times on, on uh, Facebook posts I don't, uh, it, that, you know, hell is not pe full of people who, that God has rejected. Hell is full of people who have rejected God. You know, there's a big difference. I mean, uh, God doesn't reject anybody. God will not reject anybody that comes to him and asks for forgiveness and grace. But, but they can't, people can um, turn away from God. And people can reject God. And so Jesus is saying that I, Jesus, the Son of Man, came because God loves the world. If you believe in me, you will not perish. You'll have eternal life. And I did not come to condemn, but to save. And all who believe in me are saved already. What a wonderful promise we have in those three verses. And um, it's, it's always fun to kind of look a little bit deeper into the story. So may your story continue to live in God's grace today.